Nocardia is actually an umbrella term that refers to a set of different subspecies of bacteria. They all have nocardia as the leading term in the name. For example, nocardia asteroides, nocardia blah blah blah. So for the purposes of exams, don't worry about which subtype of nocardia we're talking about. If you see the word nocardia, we're talking about a bunch of different bacteria belonging to the same family that all cause a similar spectrum of clinical disease. Let's start with defining characteristics. Nocardia are gram-positive filamentous bacillus, and the term filamentous is really important. It has filaments, it branches, and I'll show you an image on the next slide of what that looks like. Nocardia are catalase-positive, obligate aerobes, and weakly acid-fast. They are found pretty ubiquitously in the soil, and for most people this is no problem, but in immunocompromised individuals, nocardia can be very problematic. Nocardia causes pulmonary nocardiosis, cutaneous nocardiosis, or disseminated nocardiosis. And some people refer to disseminated nocardiosis as CNS nocardiosis, and that's obviously because once it's disseminated, those symptoms usually will show up in some type of neurological abnormality. More on this in a few slides. Nocardia is spread through inhalation or direct inoculation slash trauma. So either breathing in the bacteria or the bacteria directly inoculates an opened or existing wound if there's some type of trauma. Here's an image of that filamentous or branching quality in nocardia. You can see that it almost looks like a fungi in some, in some way. So if you see this, it's pretty unique. I would know what the image looks like. This is pretty characteristic of nocardia. Not a whole lot of virulence to talk about. Let's just get right into the clinical features. Nocardia can cause three different presentations. It can cause a pulmonary infection, a cutaneous infection, and then typically once either the pulmonary or cutaneous infection gets disseminated systemically, you get full-blown disseminated nocardiosis. And again, this is sometimes referred to as CNS nocardiosis. Let's start by talking about pulmonary. So in pulmonary nocardiosis, this is the most common presentation. The infection is obviously in the lungs, and this occurs chiefly in immunocompromised individuals. The infection is going to resemble a pneumonia, which makes it somewhat difficult to differentiate in terms of a differential diagnosis against other pulmonary infections. Oftentimes, pulmonary nocardiosis is mistaken for tuberculosis, and the reason for this is that it can actually form multifocal nodules or cavitations in the lungs. So on your exam, if you're given a patient and you're shown a chest x-ray that shows nodules and cavitations, you should correctly be thinking about tuberculosis, but also keep nocardia in your differential, because that's something that test writers like to do. Because both TB and pulmonary nocardiosis look very similar on imaging, you have to be able to differentiate between the two. So that's pulmonary nocardiosis. There's also cutaneous nocardiosis. So in cutaneous nocardiosis, what typically happens is that an open wound or some type of pre-existing injury gets inoculated and the bacteria goes right into that wound and it can cause a few things. Most often, it's gonna be some type of cellulitis. So you'll see a cellulitis picture on your exam. But there's also lymphocutaneous or pyogenic mycetoma forms of cutaneous nocardiosis. So if you see local swelling, redness, other signs of inflammation, enlarged or painful lymph nodes, typically occurring in the lower extremities, you wanna be thinking about cutaneous nocardiosis. Now, the final type of nocardiosis and the most severe is disseminated. So usually the infection will start either in the pulmonary or cutaneous nocardiosis, and then that will disseminate and actually become quote unquote metastatic. What's happening here is that there's two plus sites of involvement. So again, either the pulmonary infection occurs, so you get that TB-like, pneumonia-like picture, but then these abscesses spread to other parts of the body, and typically it'll be in the brain. That's why some people refer to this as CNS nocardiosis. 
the, the term that's used is metastatic abscesses. So you've got these abscesses that are now spreading. They're not just in the lungs. They're not just in the extremities in, in the case of cutaneous nocardiosis. Now they're spreading and they typically end up in the brain. So on your exam, if you see abscesses in the brain or lower extremities and the presence of what sounds like pulmonary nocardiosis, it's pretty much a slam dunk that the test writer is giving you nocardia infection. So just keep this in the back of your mind. I'll show you an image in just a few slides here, but what you really want to think about are these CNS symptoms. So you can see CNS abscesses or uh, ring enhancing lesions, but you also want to be on the lookout for other CNS symptoms that occur secondary to that, that mass in the brain. So things like seizures, etc. Now, this is really stupid, but the way that I've always memorized this and my really silly mnemonic here is that when I think of nocardia, it kind of sounds like gnocchi. I can't really think of another word that sounds like nocardia. So I've, I've always thought about gnocchi. And gnocchi are these, you know, little round uh, pieces of, of pasta or noodle. And so when I see these little gnocchis, it reminds me that I'm going to expect to see little gnocchis in the brain. And that is to say that when you get disseminated nocardiosis, you see abscesses and ring enhancing lesions, which in my very ridiculous brain reminds me of little gnocchis in the brain. Now, obviously, there are other things that you should be keeping on your differential if you see an image like this. But the key takeaway here is that if you see an image like this in a patient with pulmonary symptoms or some type of pneumonia-like presentation and or abscesses in the lower extremities or some type of lymphocutaneous or cellulitis type infection, you obviously need to be thinking about nocardia. So again, nocardia equals gnocchi, little gnocchis in the brain, little gnocchis in the extremities, plus pneumonia, this is nocardia. Let's conclude by talking briefly about treatment. So treatment, pretty simple here. The antibiotic of choice is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, but you also want to keep in mind that if there's the presence of all of these abscesses or all of these cutaneous um, kind of cavitations, then what you would use would be surgery. So that is nocardia. Key takeaway here is nocardia equals gnocchi, and you see little gnocchis throughout the body.